and welcome back to the second part of the payroll management system. Now let's exit out. Okay, so what we want to do now is to finish up with the namings. So let's come right here. You see here, I'm going to change that to maybe city benefit or city within allowance, something like that. So let's just set for city benefit. There we go. And the text editor here, we change that to DBE City Benefit. There. The next one is going to be basic pay or basic salary. So let's come right here. The caption Basic Salary and change this to DBE basic salary now here I'm going to change that to overtime overtime and this is going to become DBE overtime with the overtime, I'm going to enter a default value in there. So let's say we have a zero in there. I think this is like a text box. So here somewhere, let's see. Okay, I'm going to enter the default value on the database. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now we have in here the next one is going to be task or tax. So let's go to the caption here. Tax. And this is going to be known as tax. There. And this other one here. Uh, let's call that pension. Right. We have the pension there. Okay, now this will be pension. Okay, all that is done. Let's come in here now. Take care of this. Uh, this that is correct, and this one is going to be payroll name. I don't know. Yeah, payroll name that'll do. And this is going to be payroll name. DBE payroll name. And the next one is going to be NI number. NI number. And here that will be. Let's change that to C. DC. DBC and I um, I think I'm using the wrong yeah let's get rid of that get rid of this we just need an ordinary one in there paste this here and change this one to BBC and I you don't want to use a combo box with that. Undo that. Say an I number. There. And after that, we change this one to an I code. Oh, that's 
not valid. Place that back in there. This should be here up here. Select this caption and I could write copy that select this DBA and I could the NI code tax code and this is task code DBA task code I'm doing all of this because of uh, the comment I received some people were unable to name the co components so this one is going to be taxable Taxable pay. Taxable pay. And here, that's going to be. Ah, we have to change that. That's not. Copy this and this one as well. I'm going to have to change it. Delete. Copy and paste. Do that again, copy, paste, paste again, no copy, and paste. Right. Taxable pay. And this is DBE, taxable pay. This will be for student loan. If you have any loan as a student, come in here and just change that to student loan. This is student loan. Almost there. This is going to be pensionable. Let's come right here and just change that to pensionable. Okay, we have pensionable pay and and the other one and I pay and this is going to be and I pay and I payment here that's going to be pensionable. Right now, let's move this back a little bit so that we can see pensionable properly. So come right here and just drag it back. Select it all. And drag. Okay, so that'll do. They all have their names now. And as for this, so this one is going to be BTN. First of all, let's name this one. Let's come right here, just go to the name. Where is it? Name right here. So I'm going to just call that TXC display. Right, this one we call that BTN. BTN backspace. Let's say back space. BTNCE BTNC and BTN just called up PM PM BTN the plus sign I say addition BTN9 BTN8 
and just copy the BTN BTN 8 BTN 7 BTN 4 BTN 5 BTN 6 BTN sub BTN 1 BTN 2 BTN 3 BTN divide let's just say die BTN malt BTN equals BTN dot and BTN O there we go now all the components have their respective names so click on save that and let's run it and see okay guys this is how it all looks for now right so that is fine i'm gonna exit out and let's select all of the number buttons and we're going to use an event for this button so let's come in there see where we have events click on that and let's just drag this so that you guys can see what I'm about to do in the object inspector so let's go into click right inside click I'm going to change that to number click press enter there we go now we have an area where we can add a function for all of those buttons but before I do that you see right underneath the form I'm going to create some variables in there so let's come down just say double I'll call that first first number comma second number comma and I'm going to call the next one results and enter semicolon I will also declare a string variable that I'm going to call operators there we go now back into my event called number click for all of the buttons first of all I'm going to create an object and that object will be let's say T buttons and the name of the T buttons we should add a, a pointer there and the name of the T button is going to be BTN equals open a bracket and we say T buttons close close that that will be sender there now using an if statement so let's say if txt display pointer text equals equals zero remember I did enter a zero value in there then the display will be equals whatever we have inside txt paste that in there equals btn whatever we have in the caption I mean btn caption else come right down here enter coil braces else is going to be 
display equals display plus whatever come in here equals display plus btn caption and that should take care of my that should take care of all of those buttons okay I'm gonna save that let's run it click on run let's see there we go should be able to just click on any of the numbers that is good okay that's fine so exit out now let's go back into the design view here I'm now going to select all of these operators here the arithmetic operators and let's go back to the events okay right in here so I'm just going to call that click operators operators so that is the name for all of those press enter and I'm also going to give it a name so maybe just copy this as well copy that paste that in here the object is already created anyway so I'm gonna come down in here and just call this very or use this very first variable here right underneath here enter that so whatever value that I entered inside my display here grab that it is stored inside first number come right down and let's uh, since it's double I'm going to say dot to double okay yeah that takes care of that error now that that is done and we then say whatever we have in here that is stored inside the first number so in that case we need to check out what is operator grab that operator is going to be btn equals btn point dot caption there we go and at the same time let's clear this grab that come down here and let's get it cleared there we go that should take care of my operators save and let's run that as well there we go so if I click on any of these the test content should disappear for yeah that's good once you click on any of that it's stored inside the first num now that is fine so let's take care of equals so that is the equals I'm gonna double click on the equals and right here with the equals first of all now let me grab this inside the equals I'm gonna say second num equals as follows now let's use an if statement to validate the operators if operator operates with an s that's what i call it it's not operator operates if is equals equals the plus sign then i want as follows a thing that is called results very good grab grab that come right down say result equals as follows first number plus second number that is that now we now want to store whatever we have inside result right in here so say equals result 
so that takes care of the very first one well, I'm gonna copy all of these and let's use an else statement else if else if if it's subtraction this will become subtraction grab that now take care of the next one and the next one so if this is division this will become division if this is multiplication and this will become multiplication and that takes care of that so let's try that out that is the equals taking care of so save and I'm gonna run it and just check that out see how that works okay so let's say 5 multiply by 3 there we go that's fine let's divide that by 9 that is good okay plus whatever all right exit out now the calculator is almost done so we need to take care of backspace clear entry clear plus minus and the decimal first of all let's take care of this decimal first double click on that and inside the decimal I'm going to use an if statement if not txt display pointer text dot post if it's if it has that close that again there we go so what we would then want the system to do is take that off take the t off right what we then want the system to do in that case is this txt display will be equals txt display plus the decimal sign that should take care of that so if we run that now first of all let me save that run there we go so if I select whatever there we go we can only add one decimal look at that so that's fine the decimal is working so let's take care of the backspace double click on the backspace and right inside the backspace the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna declare an integer variable and this integer variable I'm gonna call it Q and this Q itself is going to be t taking the following or initialize it with the following txt display point to text dot length enter parenthesis now use it an if statement if Q equals equals one the following is going to happen txt display will be equal zero paste that there equals the value zero else say declare a variable that will call d d will be equals txt display dot delete q and leave one in there okay then txt display will be equals d and there that is that now 
Let's run that and see how that will work. But take it from here. All right, let's see what's going to happen. If it's equals equals 1, then that should default back to 0. So let's run it now and see. We have an error there. Let's see. Oh, I should have ended that with semicolon there. Try that again. Run. It's coming up now. Okay, let's enter some value in there and make use of the backspace. You see that default back to zero, so that's good. There we go. So that's fine. Save that. Now let's take care of clear entry. Enter space in there. So with the clear entry, I'm just going to first of all, let's copy this, get that to be, let's empty, empty that, oh, undo that, copy, come down here, paste, empty, and underneath I'm going to declare two variables that I'll call F and S, first number and second number, there, now, first number equals whatever we have inside the variable f first num then s would be whatever we have inside second num good so now let's clear f and also clear s there. That should, you see this from here down here? That should take care of the clear entry. And here, I'm going to copy that and let's use that for this very one here. Clear. Paste that in there. Now, let's try both out. This very one. Enter zero in here. Now, Save, click on run. The clear entry will always clear the maybe the second value that you enter or whatever value you enter. So let's say eight multiply by five. We don't want the last entry, so I'm gonna clear that and change it to two. So the answer if it's correct that should give me sixteen. There we go, that's fine. So let's clear everything there so that's fine it's working it's multiplied by 9 equals that very good so everything is working apart from this now let's take care of the plus minus so double click on the plus minus so with the plus minus first of all I'm going to declare a variable that I'm going to call Q now I'm going to say Q equals the following. Grab this and just paste it right here. And I say dot convert to double. And close that up. Now let's say txt display pointer text that will be equals with minus one multiply that by q close that and that's all there is to that so whatever we have in here we multiply it by minus one that's all that's what i've just done so save that, run. And if that works the way we want, that means the calculator is all taken care of. So let's enter whatever value in there. Plus, minus, look at that. So if you say multiply that by 2, yeah, that's correct. There. Multiply by 
four. There we go. There. So with that, guys, I'm gonna call it the end of the second part of this tutorial, and I will see you guys shortly.